So welcome to this session where I will be demonstrating on pelvic assessment of the maternal pelvis on the model. Shall we go ahead? Yes ma'am. Yes. So before proceeding to the demonstration, it is important that we ensure few things like number one, we will have to take a verbal consent from the mother that we are going to assess the pelvis and give her some information. Number two, ensure that the mother has passed urine just before the examination. Number three, just ask her whether she had a normal bowel movement today morning because we don't assess when there is a constipation or a loaded rectum. Fourth important point would be to maintain the privacy. Fifth is we will assess in a, on a table which has a U cut so that the mother can be brought to the edge of the table and the privacy has to be maintained. Thank you. So under aseptic precautions, that means a proper hand wash with six steps of hand wash, then wearing a sterile glove is important before the examination. Take a saline swab, clean the external genitalia, right? Before you pass your fingers into the vagina. So here we are assessing three levels. One is at the inlet, the seven, second is at the cavity and the third is the outlet. Coming to the inlet, so what are we assessing at the inlet? At the inlet, the most important diameter, there is the narrowest through which the head has to pass. That is the, which diameter do you think? It is anterior posterior. Uh, the AP diameter. So uh, AP diameter we have three levels isn't it? Anatomical, the second is okay. obstetric, the third is diagonal. Yeah, right. So we cannot reach the upper part, we cannot reach the mid part. What we can reach only is the lower that is the diagonal conjugate. So I am demonstrating measurement of diagonal conjugate that is the anterior posterior diameter of the inlet. Yeah. Did you get me? For that, I am passing my right hand fingers. That only two fingers. That is the middle and the index, index finger. Very right. So, I am separating the labia and then I am gently entering. I am trying to go and reach the highest point of the sacrum. What could be the highest point of the sacrum? Sacral promontory, exactly. So, I am going and trying to reach it without indenting the perineum. We should not indent and try and reach. We should pass it only to a point without indenting the perineum and that would be the highest point. Actual sacral promontory is here, but without indenting the perineum, I am able to reach to the highest point of the sacral. If I indent, I can reach, but we are not supposed to do the Indenting yeah. the perineum to reach the sacral point. Did you get my point? Because we will have to measure the AP diameter. So, without indenting the perineum, my middle finger has reached this point of the sacral. That is the highest point my hand could reach. Using my left hand index finger to place at the point just below the subcubic angle. So, did you get the measurement so my middle finger is at the level of the highest point of the sacrum and the lowest measurement is determined by the by the left hand index finger at the level of the sub pubic angle now i just remove my hand and this is the which diameter is this anterior posterior diameter out of the three types I said which inlet. diameter inlet. at the inlet itself diagonal conjugate so from this measurement I will have to subtract 1.5 centimeter why should I subtract 1.5 centimeter to get the real obstetric conjugate is inclination and the thickness of the symphysis pubis to eliminate this factor I will be I told you obstetric is this point diagonal is the lower so actually our intention is to measure the least diameter that is the obstetric that is the reason why we will have to subtract 1.5 to 2 centimeter from this 
diameter if it is equivalent to after subtraction if it is equivalent to 10 cm that means it is an adequate at the level of the inlet ap diameter is adequate at the inlet did you understand yes sir thank you continue with the inlet we have a big bone this is the sacrum so we will have to assess the curvature of the sacrum and any pseudo promontories what do i mean by pseudo promontory this is the fifth sacral vertebra which has the promontory whereas if other sacral bones have a prominence it is called as pseudo promontory so i will have to sweep my fingers that is the index and the middle finger along the sacrum from above downwards and from side to side and check for the curvature of the sacrum and then for any pseudo promontories if i feel any pseudo promontories i need to make a mention if i can feel that from above downwards and from to side to side it is like a cup or a concavity and well curved it is a good feature a straight sacrum is not a good feature presence of prominent sacral pseudo promontory is again not a good feature so i finish with the continue with the inlet we have a big bone